Today I'm going to share with you all of the backpacking gear I brought with me for 17 days and 250 miles while solo section hiking the Pacific Crest Trail here in Washington this summer. Hey guys, my name is Kathleen, former PCT through hiker, avid Pacific Northwest day hiker, solo long distance backpacker, and the hungry hiker here on YouTube. At the beginning of August of this year, I started from Suquamish Pass and headed south along the PCT by myself for 17 days and 250 miles until I reached Cascade Locks at the Washington-Oregon border. A few of you have been asking me about the backpacking gear I used for this trip, so I figured I'd make a video showing you everything that was in my pack for my solo section hike along the PCT. I'll also share with you why I brought each of these items with me, if there was anything I really loved, anything I sent home, and how I packed my pack with all of my backpacking gear and food. If you like more details about the backpacking gear I mentioned in this video, I've created a lighterpack.com list that has all of the links and details for all of the gear I'm going to share with you. Click the link in the video description box below to check out my complete lighterpack.com PCT section hike gear list for this trip. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video about backpacking, backpacking food, and tips on how to plan your next backpacking trip. Maybe you've been thinking about planning a backpacking trip or section hike along the Pacific Crest Trail and you have no idea what kind of backpacking gear you'll need. Or maybe you're already in the process of planning your next overnight backpacking trip and need help figuring out what backpacking gear to pack and how to pack your pack. When it comes to backpacking gear and packing for a trip, I look at everything as a system instead of individual pieces of gear. For this trip, I brought with me my pack, shelter system, sleep system, cooking system, water filtration system, my poop kit, first aid kit, repair tool toiletry kit, electronics, packed clothing, miscellaneous seasonal gear, and worn clothing. Here's all of the backpacking gear that worked for me for my solo section hike along the PCT this summer, starting with my pack. A lot of you noticed that I switched out my pack this year. Good eye, guys. I switched from the Osprey Asia 48 to the Gossamer Gear Mariposa 60. The Mariposa 60 comes in just at two pounds and has a removable internal frame, but I left mine on in for additional support. Things I love about this pack, the load lifters and all of the awesome pockets throughout this pack. I'm obsessed with all of the pockets on this pack. I use the big mesh pocket on the outside for storing dirty, wet stuff like my tent fly when it's wet, my camp shoes, micro spots, Bikes, bug repellent, and trash. I use the big side pocket to store my tent poles, footprint, tent stakes, and butt pads so I have easy access to them whenever I stop for a break or get to camp and want to set up my tent. On the other side, there are two outside pockets. One I keep my water filtration system in and the other one my poop kit. Again, items I want to have easy access to when out on trail during the day. The hip belt pockets are super roomy and big enough to store my iPhone 12 in. I keep things like sunscreen, my knife, gloves, chapstick, and extra snacks to eat while hiking in here. The only thing I don't love about this pack is the color, which I have in the green. That's okay. I hear they make the same pack now in purple. For my shelter system, I use the Big Agnes Copper Spur One Person freestanding tent along with the matching footprint. This is my second year using this tent and I love it. I considered switching to a trekking pole tent to save some weight, but I love the flexibility of having a freestanding tent. I can literally set it up anywhere and on anything. It's small enough that it fits even in the tiniest spaces like this awesome spot I found on the top of this ridge with an epic view of Mount Rainier. The Big Agnes Copper Spur One Person Tent is just over two pounds. Not super light, but light enough for me. It's easy to set up, has plenty of room inside to store my gear inside when I'm sleeping, and I don't feel claustrophobic when I'm inside changing or packing up my gear. I've never had an issue with condensation with this tent, and it always keeps me warm and dry in both rain and in freak snowstorms. I love this tent, and I plan on using it again in 2023. Since I tend to sleep cold, my sleep system is a little heavier and warmer than most other backpacking sleep systems. My sleep system consists of an Enlightened Equipment Enigma Custom Quilt, the Thermarest Neo Air X-Therm Inflatable Sleeping Pad, an inflatable pillow, a silk liner for my quilt, a pair of synthetic booties to sleep in, and a 13 liter dry sack to store my sleep system in. I love my Enlightened Equipment Quilt, not just because it's purple, but because it's super light coming in at only 24 ounces and it keeps me really warm at night. Paired with my quilt, I also use the Thermarest Neo Air X-Therm Inflatable Sleeping Pad, which has an R value of 6.9, meaning it has 
a lot of insulation, helping me to stay warm on even the coldest nights out on trail. I use a Cocoon Mummy Silk Liner because it not only helps keep my quilt clean when out on trail, but it also adds an additional five to 10 degrees of warmth at night. I also have a Cocoon Inflatable Pillow because it's really comfy, and I have a pair of Enlightened Equipment Sidekick Synthetic Booties for those really cold nights when my feet might need a little extra help staying warm. I'm super paranoid about getting my sleep system wet, so I store my quilt, liner, pillow, booties, and the clothes I sleep in inside a Sea to Summit 13 liter dry sack and keep it at the bottom of my pack throughout the day. For my cooking system for this trip, I used the Jet Boil Stash Stove, a medium sized fuel canister, a small REI multi tool light, Sea to Summit Long Spoon, and a leftover freezer dried food bag to use to rehydrate my Ziploc freezer bag food in. I switched over from cooking meals directly in my pot to Ziploc freezer bag cooking, which means that I use my pot to boil water and then add the boiling water to my meal in a Ziploc freezer bag. Make sure you get the freezer bags, not the sandwich bags. The sandwich bags won't be able to withstand the heat of the boiling water. Then I put my Ziploc freezer bag meal inside my food koozie for about 10 to 12 minutes and then let my food rehydrate without using any extra fuel or having to clean a dirty pot after dinner. All I have to do then is dry off the pot inside before putting it away for the evening. For food storage, I kept my food and scented items stored in a 10 liter earth sack, which is a rodent proof, bear proof food bag. At camp, I made sure to keep my earth sack out of my tent and at least 100 feet away from where I was sleeping. Hard sided bear canisters were not required when hiking through this section of the PCT. If you're curious about the backpacking food I brought with me and how I set up my resupply strategy for this trip, make sure you check out my video, Backpacking Food I Ate on the Pacific Crest Trail for 17 Days. I'll include a link to the video in the description below. For my water filtration system for this trip, I brought with me the Katadyne Be Free 1 liter water filter bottle, 2 liter Cnoc Vecto bag with a Be Free thread to store dirty water in, 1 liter Cnoc collapsible bottle with the Be Free thread, a Chicken Tramper Ultralight Gear shoulder strap sleeve for my collapsible water bottle, and a small Gatorade bottle for mixing my smoothies and electrolytes in. My poop kit pretty much stays the same for any backpacking trip I go on. Inside my poop kit, I carry a light weight deuce trowel, a cooler cloth, a menstruation cup, hand sanitizer, doggy bags, baby wipes, and I store my entire poop kit in my poop emoji space bear bag, which I absolutely love. And it makes finding my poop kit in my pack really easy. Whatever you pack in, you must pack out. This also includes used toilet paper and baby wipes. Please do not bury used toilet paper or baby wipes. These items need to be packed out and taken with you. This also goes for feminine products, not only when you're in the backcountry, but also when using a backcountry privy. This is why I keep doggy bags in my poo kit. I pack out all of my used baby wipes in a doggy bag and then store the doggy bag with the rest of my trash. For all of my trash, I put everything in a used Ziploc bag and store it in the outside pouch of my pack. This way, I always remember to take out my trash out of my pack at the end of the day and put it in my earth sack at night. As soon as I get into town, I have access to a trash can. I can easily grab my trash bag from the outside pouch of my pack and throw it away. My backpacking first aid kit also stays pretty much the same for any backpacking trip I go on. Unless if I'm leading a group trip, then I'll add a few more things. To see all of the items I carry in my backpacking first aid kit, check out my how to create a backpacking first aid kit video. Not only is it important to have a backpacking first aid kit and bring it with you on your backpacking trips, but it's also equally important to know how to use all of the items in your kit. My backpacking first aid kit weighs in just over a pound at 24.6 ounces. Not the lightest system I carry in my pack, but having these items in my kit helps me feel safe and confident whether it's me who gets sick and injured out on trail or I come across another hiker who might need help. This is another system in my pack that pretty much stays the same for each backpacking trip I go on. In my repair tool toiletry kit, I carry a Nikkor Lumen lightweight rechargeable headlamp. This thing is awesome and super lightweight. Stormproof matches with fire starter in case I need to start a fire and my Bic lighter won't cut it. For gear repair items, I carry things like tenacious tape, mini crazy glue single use tubes, zip ties, paracord, a sharpie, 
a repair kit with several patches for my inflatable sleeping pad, and a knife, which I actually store in one of my hip belt pockets when I'm out on trail. For toiletries, I carry a travel toothbrush and toothpaste, chapstick, sunscreen with SPF 30, a couple hair ties, and a travel brush with a built-in mirror. Since I film all of my big hikes and make videos for YouTube, I tend to carry more electronics than most hikers, which is why my electronic system comes in weighing at 3.42 pounds. Here's all the electronics I brought with me for this trip. A GoPro 10 with a small selfie stick to use for shooting videos and taking photos with when out on trail. I also brought six GoPro batteries with me so that I could replace my battery instead of charging them each night when using my power bank. I did bring with me a GoPro battery dual charger that I would use to charge my batteries whenever I got into town. An iPhone 12 that I used to take photos with and listen to music on and power up the Far Out app which I used for navigation when out on trail. A Crave Plus Pro external power bank that I used to charge all of my electronics with when out on trail. Then I would come into town, I'd use my Anchor Quick Charge port to charge all of my electronics at the same time in one outlet, including my power bank. A Garmin inReach, which is a two-way satellite communicator, GPS tracker, navigation tool, two-way satellite messenger, and an SOS device all in one. With my Garmin inReach, I have the option to send text messages to family and friends at home when I'm out on the trail and don't have cell service. And if I ever find myself in an emergency and need to press the SOS button, I have a two-way communication with emergency responders and charging cords for all of my electronics along with an extra memory card for my GoPro. For my packed clothing, I brought with me my my Melanzana micro grid dress or my Melly, which is probably my most favorite clothing item I own. On trail, I wear this early in the morning and when it's cold and put this on as soon as I get to camp and change out of my hiking clothes for the day. Enlightened Equipment Tora Jacket, which is my synthetic puffy jacket that only weighs 5.7 ounces and is incredibly warm. Really nice to wear on those chilly nights at camp. A pair of Athleta leggings in case it gets too cold to wear shorts. My Tiva sandals, which I use as camp shoes and water crossing shoes so my trail runners and socks stay dry, a tank top and lightweight pair of shorts to sleep in, a pair of liner gloves, and two extra pair of darn tough hiking socks. This system of gear tends to change for each trip I go on depending on the time of year I'm hiking, where I'm hiking, the type of terrain I plan on hiking in, and local rules and regulations for the area I plan on traveling through. For my PCT section hike, I brought with me a pair of black diamond carbon trekking poles, which I never go backpacking without. On my trekking poles, I also keep duct tape wrapped around each pole for easy access in case I need to use any when out on trail. During this trip, it ended up raining on me one day while I was out on trail, so I was really happy I had packed my rain gear with me. My rain gear I had an Enlightened Equipment Visp rain jacket. This is probably my most favorite rain jacket I've ever owned and it's made of a waterproof breathable fabric so it keeps me dry and warm without feeling like I'm sweating in a garbage bag. It has pit zips for built-in ventilation and it only weighs 5.7 ounces. I also like that this jacket has a drop tail hem which means it's a bit on the long side in the back and it doesn't ride up under my pack helping to keep my back end covered and dry when it's wet out. An Enlightened Equipment rain wrap that I use over my leggings instead of wearing a pair of rain pants. I carried a pair of micro spikes which I did end up using during the section hike when I went through the Goat Rocks area. There were a few snow traverses in this section, a couple of them fairly sketchy, so I was super happy to have my micro spikes and be able to use them and feel more comfortable crossing over those sketchy sections. After hiking through the Goat Rocks area, I didn't need my micro spikes for the rest of the trail, so I sent them home to myself from Trout Lake. Bugs were a huge issue in this section before coming into and coming out of White Pass. So I was really happy to not only have bug repellent, but I also had my bug bucket hat to keep the bugs from flying into my face. My rain jacket also came in pretty handy during these two sections as well. And my Thermarest Z seat or my butt pad. I use this thing every time I stop for a break or get into camp at night. I love being able to sit on one of these instead of just sitting in the dirt. For worn clothing, I had my daily hiking uniform, which can consisted of a gray lightweight outdoor research echo sun hoodie. I love hiking in this thing. It helps keep my skin protected from the sun. It's light enough that I can comfortably wear this in the heat and not feel too hot. And the hoodie is big enough to wear comfortably over my hiking hat. A pair of Athleta running shorts because I feel the most comfortable hiking in a pair of shorts. A buff to protect my neck and face from the sun and wind. A pair of darn tough hiking socks. My knock around sunglasses. My through pack sun 
Summit Bum Fanny Pack in purple, which is where I keep my GoPro, extra batteries, my phone, the Hungry Hiker stickers to give out to subscribers I meet out on trail, and extra snacks in. And my last pair of Solomon Odyssey Pro Trail Runners, which they don't make anymore. I'm super sad because on this trip, I finally wore through these shoes. The total base weight for all of the backpacking gear I brought with me on this trip, not including food, water, fuel, trekking poles, or the clothes I hiked in, was 20.7 pounds. If you want more details about the backpacking gear I brought with me for my PCT section hike, I created a lighterpack.com list that has all of the links and details for all of the gear I mentioned in this video. Click the link in the video description box below to check out my complete lighterpack.com PCT section hike gear list for this trip. To pack my pack, I always start by putting both my rain jacket and puffy jacket at the bottom of my pack, unless it's raining. Then I either wear my rain jacket or I keep it in the front mesh pocket of my pack for easy access. Then I take the dry sack that my sleeping system is in and I stuff it all the way down to the bottom of my pack, sitting on the top of my rain jacket and puffy jacket, making sure that it sits at the bottom of my pack horizontally. Once my sleep system is in my pack, I'll take my food bag and put it right down the middle of my pack vertically so it sits right on top of my sleep system. Then I put my inflatable sleeping pad inside right next to my food bag. Then I take the two big pieces of my tent, the body of my tent and the tent fly and stuff them into my pack, filling the space in between my food bag and my sleeping pad. If my tent fly is wet, I'll stuff it in the front mesh pocket of my pack so that the inside of my pack doesn't get wet. Also, if the rain stops, I'll have easy access to my tent fly and be able to take it out and let it air dry in the sun during the break throughout the day. Then from here, I stuff things like my first aid kit, cooking pot with a fuel canister, electronics bag, repair tool toiletry kit, and any other loose clothing items into the inside body of my pack. Then I close my pack and cinch down the straps. On the one side of my pack with the large pocket, I store in here my tent footprint with the tent stakes inside, the tent poles, and my butt pad. I like having quick access to these parts of my tent because it makes setting up my tent once I get to camp so much easier and faster, especially if it's raining out. On the other side of my pack with the two pockets, I store my water filtration system, including the small Gatorade bottle in the bottom pocket and my poop kit in the top pocket. Both of these I want to have easy access to when out on trail during the day. For my collapsible water bottle, I stick this in my shoulder strap sleeve as soon as it's filled with filtered water. In my fanny pack, I carry my GoPro on the selfie stick with extra batteries, my phone, the Hungry Hiker stickers, and any extra snacks I want quick access to throughout the day. In the front mesh pocket, I put in here my rain pack cover, my micro spikes, my camp shoes, my bug repellent and bug net, and my trash bag. In my hip belt pockets, I'll store extra snacks for the day and a pair of liner gloves just in case my hands get cold, and my knife. And that's it. I make sure I pack and unpack my pack in the same exact order each time so I always know where everything is inside of my pack at all times. Having good pack organization will not only help prevent you from losing gear, but you'll also be able to get items you need quickly whenever you need them and you'll never have to worry about where something is because everything will have its place within your pack. I hope you found this video helpful with trying to figure out what backpacking gear you'll need and how to pack your pack for your next overnight backpacking trip or section hike along the PCT. Keep in mind, we all have different trip objectives and needs when out in the backcountry. What works for me might not work for you. Hopefully this video inspires you to start planning your next backpacking trip and will help take the mystery out of what kind of backpacking gear to bring with you. If you'd like more details about the backpacking gear I mentioned in this video, make sure you check out my lighterpack.com list, which has all of the links and details for all of the backpacking gear I brought with me for this trip. Check the link down in the video description box below. If you're planning on Packing for an overnight backpacking trip in the near future, I've put together a free backpacking gear packing list that is designed to help you get organized when planning your next trip. Get your free packing list by clicking the link in the video description box below. If you like this video and got some value out of it, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time new videos are posted. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Happy trails and keep on trucking.